Welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm OGL Schmidt. This is Custom Creator. My friend Danny Lee OGT will be joining us very shortly. This handsome gentleman you're seeing on your screen right now, not me, of course, but that is David Allen Coe. Now, this guy is a legend. He's a, let's say, a pioneer of, uh, or at least a, a uh, renowned practitioner of outlaw country. And <laughs> he really puts the outlaw in outlaw country. He's spent his youth in uh, reform schools, spent a lot of his early adulthood in prison, and it was actually music that sort of gave him a uh, path to legitimacy, for lack of a better term. I think he actually uh, started playing in prison. When he got out, he made that his uh, his job. Uh, he was a, a well-known songwriter, wrote a lot of songs for others. Um, I think he actually, his songs were performing better when sung by other people than they were when sung by him for a while. Uh, he's had some legendary tracks. The Ride is uh, something that we've reacted to here on the channel, which is an amazing song. He's also known for... <laughs> he He's not an, a favorite of the establishment, which means here we here at Custom Creator are cool with him. He is uh, ornery. He's got a filthy mouth. He is who he is. He's never not going to be David Allen Coe. I do want to find something that his father, he said something about his father making comparison with the Lone Ranger. He's so David Allen Coe had actually had a rhinestone cowboy gimmick, the uh, mysterious rhin rhinestone cowboy. This was before the song, I think Mel Tillis, no, it wasn't Mel Tillis, it was Glenn Campbell, had a song called Rhinestone Cowboy, but this was three years before that, where he had dressed up in the you know, rhinestones and a Lone Ranger mask. And, uh, well, and Hank William Sr. also wore the nudie boots and the rhinestones. Yeah, that's, yep. that's why Carrie Underwood's tour was uh, denim, denim and rhinestones. And rhinestones, rhinestones. Yeah. 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 Uh, so he said, I got the mysterious rhinestone thing from my father. He asked me, you know, the only way that the Lone Ranger can go into town? I said, no, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. He said he has to take his mask off. I thought, what is my dad talking about and trying to tell me? He said, well, son, you have to wear a mask, and then you, when you don't want to be David Allen Coe, you can take your mask off and go anywhere and not be like Elvis and people messing with you all the time. Which, I thought that was kind of cool, kind of the you know, curse of fame and whatnot. He retired that and did a much more, almost like an exaggerated traditional outlaw where it just sort of like leaned into the, the stereotypes of it, but I, I really do kind of feel that's who he is. You know, I've never talked to the man personally, but he is, you know, he's an outlaw's outlaw, no doubt. I think he's actually a part of a motorcycle club in Louisville, Indiana. Uh, the... Yeah, let's don't talk about that. Okay. That's, it's just, that's fair. I grew up around bikers and... Okay, I got it's you. kind of like code, code not talking about that. That's but fair. yeah, that's, he is. He but is. That's, that's very close to where I live. That's the only reason I brought it up, so... <laughs> well, then definitely don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. I'm just really. It's all yeah. Right. No, I, I believe me. I appreciate the info. But uh, this, the song is called Willie Waylon and Me. So this is obviously a tribute to some of his uh, contemporaries in the uh, country music scene. Danny has played me some David Allen Coe. He is. Yeah, he's a very. David Allen Coe X-rated is terribly racist and terribly bad. When I say racist, though, he grew up a lot of time in prison. And in prison, it's normal to call people the racist names. Light boy yeah. and the, the N-word. That's what they call each other. Yeah. Um, it's kind of unnormal not to. Yeah, he's definitely got a different set of experiences than a lot of people who are... I'm not saying he ain't racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he quoted, though, that he um, in prison, the white people called him uh, a black people lover. And out here, he's called racist. So. Yeah, like, doesn't make any sense, but... But he's been doing it forever. He's still doing it, if I'm not mistaken. Now he had some kind of a surgery in 2019. I'm sure but, he is probably on cane somewhere and crutching a bar yeah. or something. <laughs> and yeah, by the way, is... he used to come to the bar right down the road. I, I, I did a documentary on it, but it yeah. was windy and I was shaky for some reason. Maybe because I drove my car 120 mile an hour down there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but um, it used to be Cripple Creek. Um, and that's... It was John's Tavern in North Carolina in Gold Hill, where the very first gold rush was. If you don't believe that, we'll do a documentary about it. Oh, yeah. It's true. We, 
recent discovery on our part. But yeah, Willie Whalen and David Allen Co. Let's check it out. Okay, I got the lyrics put up here. I'm going to be oh, here for yes. No, that's you. So I'm going to take you out. Sorry. I'll bring you back. <laughs> All right. And I heard the burritos out in California could fly higher than the birds. Roger McGuinn had a 12-string guitar. It was like nothing I'd ever heard. And the eagles flew in from the West Coast. Like the birds, they were trying to be free. While in Texas, the talk turned to outlaw, like Willie, Waylon, and me. Hey, well, they say Texas music's in the making. And we've been making music that is free. Doing one night stands and playing with our bands, Willie, Waylon, and me. Oh, Mad Dog. They say that the Beatles were just the beginning of everything music could be. Just like the stones I was rolling along, like a ship lost out on the sea. And Joplin would die for the future, and Dylan would write poetry. And in Texas, the talk turned to outlaws, like Willie, Waylon, and me. My name is David Allen Coe, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. They say Texas music's in the making. We've been making music that is free. We're doing one-night stands, and we're playing with our bands, Willie, Waylon, and me, Big Jim. And then it repeats the first verse. Um, while in Texas, the talk turned out a lot like Willie, Waylon, and me. I love some of my favorite lyrics. He didn't write them, but still, they're great. Come on back in, Rose Hill. Oh, shit, sorry. Come <laughs> hey, back. So, what do you think about the lyrics real quick? Really cool. Like, the original, when I first heard the burritos flying higher than the bird, I was like, was he drunk when he wrote this, or whoever wrote it? But he's, of course, talking about the Flying Burrito Brothers and the birds, B-Y-R-D. Yeah, he's and just the talking the eagles about, yeah. and the birds that were free. Yeah, here. so it, it sort of yeah, it sort of seems to be about contrasting, you know, the traditional outlaw country style of music with a lot of the more polished contemporary. And the the outlaws toured with Leonard Skinner, mm -hmm. Greengrass, yeah. and High Tides, which was yeah. Freebird's little brother. Mm -hmm. Anyway, now we get into it. Oh shit! <laughs> Come on to this one, guys. <laughs> Are we here? Are we looking at David Onco? Probably the best picture he's ever made because he's ugly as hell. He's a weird looking dude. He's a weird looking fella. Yeah. I mean, no place to criticize, but he's down there. I don't think he's quite well, hearing him yet. It, it, this gives you a context on his kahunas. Um, David Onco was the only person that ever interviewed Hank Williams Jr. on what? Hold on, I'll get face. Um, on, well, Hank Williams Jr. used to open for Charlie Daniels. And I love the Charlie Daniels band, but there was a show that Hank blew the crowd away so much that Charlie and Daniels band just left. They would not go on after that, and Hank called them chickens for that particular moment. And never, you know, it was like a good fight with Southern boys, you fight Southern after that, but uh, yeah, Hank definitely run Charlie Daniels. Kind of like uh, Eminem, the rap battle, where at the end he does so good that the guy just Bows out. I just some, reference Hank Williams Jr. and Eminem. Nobody some guys <laughs> are uh, some guys are so good they inspire you, they make you want to, you know, pick up a guitar. Some some guys like Hank are so good that you're just like, never mind, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Well, most people just didn't want to ask him about that, but David Unco interviewed him and asked him. So <laughs> that was great. Let's go. Willie Whalen and me. <laughs> I heard the burritos out in California could fly higher than the birds. Roger McGuinn had a 12-string guitar. It was like nothing I'd ever heard. And the eagles flew in from the West Coast. Like the birds, they were trying to be free. in the make and we've been making music that is free doing one night stands playing with our bands Willie Waylon and me oh man no. 
<laughs> okay, that was an unexpected <laughs> barrage of sound. All right. Uh. <laughs> I got. Uh, <laughs> no, that woke me up. I'm just trying to decode yeah, what, what I saying. just heard. The harmonies were unexpected. They it's almost like we were at Tool concert. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, harmonies almost had like they had sort of a Beatles flavor, but it actually reminded me more of Pink Floyd. Um, we got another guy who's I don't want to say it's psychedelic, but it's got some trippy textures in there. So maybe Sturgill learned a thing or two from uh, from David Allen Coe. Uh, the tempo changes in this are like, this kind of progressive, honestly. It's not a simple song by any means. There was a drum beat that came in that sort of reminded me of like a gallop. Not like your traditional Iron Maiden gallop, but it definitely felt like you, you, know, you were riding a horse. Uh, there was some weird percussion in here, too. Can we go back to the from the uh, start from the beginning? There's a lot to take in there. I just sort of, yeah. uh, it's really in your face and really like it's it's a great or arrangement. I just wasn't expecting to have all of that hit me all at once. Yeah, well, I just realized, realized it was just a lyric video. So I mean, <laughs> there wasn't nothing to see, so I made us a little bigger. All right. Let's uh, put this storm in the background. <laughs> what the hell is it? <laughs> yeah, hey. no good. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's only three minutes thirty seconds. Uh. Yeah. Oh. I heard the First of all, I don't know about David. I think he is, but I know Willie and Waylon are from Texas, so they're pretty much the only outlaw country that weren't from the Southern United States. Like at least yeah. the big ones. They're from David Texas. is from Ohio. Yeah, David is from Ohio. So, <laughs> remainder's from. That's where all the weirdos come from. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> must be something something in the water there. <laughs> but I say that we I love obviously Maynard's yes. guy. But I mean Hank and Maynard are they're my two guys. But. Burritos out in California could fly higher than the birds. Roger McGuinn had a 12 string guitar. It was like nothing I'd ever heard. And the eagles flew in from the west coast. Like the birds, they were trying to be free. While in Texas, the tough turned out loud. Like Willie. Look up Roger McGuinn. Yeah. And I think he played for the Eagles, maybe, but I'm not sure. I, don't know I think he might have been Eagles. the Birds. Okay. So, you two, here's our pause. Back. Beatles were just the beginning of everything music could be Just like the stones I was rolling along Like a ship lost out on the sea And Joplin would die for the future And Dylan would write poetry And in Texas the talk turned out laws Like Willie They say Texas music's in the make And we've been making music that is free Doing one night stands Playing with our fans Willie, Whale and me Big Jim
I heard the burritos out in California could fly higher than the birds. Roger McGuinn had a 12-string guitar. It was like nothing I ever heard. And the eagles flew in from the west coast. Like the birds, they were trying to be free. While in Texas, the talk turned out long. Like Willie and Waylon and me. I like the little ad lib in the beginning. I never noticed that. Yeah, I'm no, at the end. Sorry. The sort of humming at the end, I like that because it's again, it's such a uh, huge ball of sound essentially. It's a maelstrom, but at the end, that humming sort of makes, brings it human, you know, back to the porch and the rocking chair, I guess. Yeah. Bow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know what my face looks like, but I'm enjoying. I really do love the song, but it's completely unexpected it just sort of came out of nowhere so again your pink floyd style harmonies there's sort of like a weird effect on the strumming guitars in the beginning that kind of had that psychedelic vibe i am positive i heard a mandolin when the song was going towards the chorus like the yeah almost gave it like a spanish flavor uh or italian then there was like these tempo changes and there were bits in there where it sounded like someone was murdering their piano just going to town on that thing mm -hmm. just rollicking and then uh, there was like this, like a br brief bit of guitar soloing, and then sort of the repeat of the second verse that had that galloping drum beat behind it, and then it all sort of peels away and goes back to him humming, almost as though like it's you know, tipping his hat to uh, Waylon and Willie. Wow, that was uh, again I'm mean, psychedelic. It was progressive. We just reacted to a Sturgill Simpson song recently, and which was completely like not what we were expecting. And, you know, even for Sturgill, kind of outside the box, this was, like, again, I see parallels between David Allen Coe and Sturgill because he was, David was bringing in some sounds that I'm not used to in what would be considered, you know, classic country. It was amazing, though, and I guess that just shows he's, he's not following anybody's rules. <laughs> but it's, it's a great song. And I think the, uh, I think kind of the chaos kind of sort of suits the, um, suits the song sort of the harmonies and then especially david humming at the end is sort of like the line of consistency that willie Waylon, and all of these uh all these classic musicians are kind of they're the uh the calm amidst all this chaos that's happening in music at the time so i kind yeah. of appreciate that well in the younger in the older days from what i understand um a lot of people didn't really consider david allen Coe country like Okay. I think he's. I think he's. He's referenced a few times. He's like, well, I thought I was rock music, but apparently I'm an outlaw country guy. <laughs> like, um, I think I, I would, I'm not. I'm not gonna quote that, but I'm pretty sure. I know that some people didn't consider him country. He kind of got like you are now a southerner too. You're an honorary southerner Thank and you. a Yankee. Honored. I don't know how that works out, but a yetherner. <laughs> you suck at both, but I love you. Um, I suck at shit too. Wait a minute, that sounds terrible. Um, I've been to jail too, but it was, uh, no, uh, I'm confident I got that on my arm, but it's okay. <laughs> so who was um? I can't so find Roger McGuinn. Yeah, Roger McGuinn was the leader of the birds. If you're asking me about yeah. that, so yeah. Gotcha. Good job there, man. You represent. I didn't know that. Like, I can't find David on here. I've looked and looked and looked, but maybe it's under the custom creator and George's nose there. George, you finally ain't got your nose and everything. <laughs> you old possum, crazy, crazy son of a bitch in country. I, I stick to it. And not just for a lot more and punch away with him and kick him in the nuts and stuff. He was a crazy ass son of no so Jones. I'm going mm. to just quote something from Chat GPT here. The lyrics of Willie Whalen and me capture the essence of the outlaw movement, emphasizing themes of independence, authenticity, and a defiance of conventional norm. And to that I say, hell yeah. My kind of dude. Yeah, and um, I 
I think it come from well, believe me, but put it this way. I love metal music. I love rock and roll. I think it's a much more chaotic, crazy scene when you go to a concert or something. But the outlaw country members lived more rock and roll lifestyle than any rock and roller in no history doubt. ever has. No doubt. No doubt. Tell me, name me 10 rock and roll stars that's been in prison for real. I could name you 10 country stars in five minutes. I ain't. Just a few. Merle Haggard was in or San Quentin prison when Johnny Cash played. <laughs> so, you know, David Allen Coe, supposedly, I've had one person to dispute this, but uh, he was definitely on death row for murder. And they abolished the um, deaths. What? Hey, I can't say the. Death penalty, the death penalty. Death penalty, yes, sentence. Yeah. Was, was sentence. Um, and then he got out on good behavior. But uh, his story is the murder come from he tried to get violated by a big black gentleman in jail, and he broke off a broomstick and beat him to death with it. But I don't know if that story's true. I do know he was on death row and he got abolished. It got abolished while he was on it. So that's and pretty the Freaking metal. world of music was much better as a result. That's the... Well, I mean, he's a racist-ass bastard, man, but, I mean, he makes some good music, man. That's the thing, yeah. I... And he ain't just what? racist. It's dirty. David yeah. Alcatraz is dirty. Red Fox is dirty and racist, too. So, yeah. you know, I always say David, David Alco is the Red Fox. So. <laughs> That's a good analogy, actually. Yeah, I'm not saying I'd like to have a cup of coffee with him, but he, he definitely makes killer music. Yeah, I mean... He scared a lot of people. <laughs> he just, he just, his weirdness. Yeah. He didn't scare Hank. In fact, he probably he was the only one to approach Hank though and ask him that question. But mm-hmm. anyway, love it, man. We'll shut up. It's 22 minutes. Yeah. Um, check out our Sturgill Simpson song. It's pretty cool, man. If you like yeah. Pink Floyd and you like Outlaw Country and Tool, it's, it's like it's like that. <laughs> Music that's kind of out of the box, you know, coming from a true independent creative mind. Yeah, definitely. Uh, With the video to match it. It's... Oh, yeah. The video's really poetic, though. It's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Because the country, he's won many, many awards, and I'll show up after this, but he's never won anything from the country music industry. But he's won rock and roll Grammys. He's won country music Grammys. Just nothing from the industry. But I will speak no more of my feelings beneath to quote the great Lane Staley and Jerry Contrell. Peace out, y'all. Mental health is real. David Allen Coe is a fucking great example of that. <laughs> he so is. I usually say me, but in this case, I'll bow down. Much love. Peace. Understand. Don't beat people with broomsticks. Music is your best uh, support group, but I might not want to be stuck in a room alone with David Allen Coe. I'm just saying. Violation. <laughs> Later. Let me know if there's a broom there.